Hey everybody, how's it going? So this is a little graph of the occupancy rates of apartments. And as you can see over the past 10 years, it's been kind of a little steady, maybe a teeny tiny uptrend. And as you can see, it has shot up recently. And the author of the article proposes a question. Apartment occupancy just hit historic high. Is that good? Now, I guess it depends what side of this you're on. I think that it's going to likely cause a lot of conflict, a lot of aggravation, and incentivize the hatred of the people who are moving, which I don't think is a great thing. So it's kind of obvious what is causing this. If you take a look at census.gov and you take a look at the most populous states and the way the population trends are going, California is losing hundreds of thousands of people. New York is losing hundreds of thousands of people. New Jersey also lost a good amount of people, and places like Texas and Florida that are more affordable are gaining people. So what's going to go on here? Well, take a look at your average apartment in New York City. You have a lot of apartments in New York that are, in my opinion, just for show. You have a lot of luxury apartments that wind up never getting rented because they're 4000 or 5000 for a studio apartment. You have all this new construction, but at the end of the day, 4000 or 5000 for a studio, it's just not affordable to a lot of people. So what a lot of people in New York City do is they live in older buildings like mine. Like this building that I live in is over 100 years old. They'll live in really old buildings and they'll have a one bedroom apartment that they'll pile five people into so that it's actually affordable for young people. Now, if you have a one bedroom apartment that has four or five people in it because you have two people sleeping in the living room and two people sleeping in the bedroom, one person sleeping in the hallway or whatever, I've seen crazy stuff like that on a regular basis. If that apartment loses three people Technically, it's still occupied. That apartment was likely meant for two people, and you had five people. So if three people leave, and one of them goes to Texas, one of them goes to Florida, and one of them goes to Georgia, now you have a higher occupancy rate in Texas, Florida, and Georgia, but you still have the same occupancy rate in New York because that apartment that had five people living there, that now has two, still occupied. And whether the apartment is occupied, it is not on a spectrum. It is a binary, the way they're measuring it. They're not saying this is over-occupied or under-occupied. The apartment's either occupied or it ain't. So if you have people that are leaving New York, California, Jersey, and other states for states that are cheaper, it's natural that the occupancy rate is going to go up. Now, is this a good thing? It depends who you are. If you're somebody who lives in New York, who lives with five other people, and was working in an office, who now gets to work remotely, you're probably happier than a pig in shit. You get to go someplace else. You get to go to an area where you have more space. Maybe you have a yard. Maybe you live by yourself and you don't have three or four or five roommates and you're paying the same amount of money. You're probably really happy. However, if you're somebody in that neighborhood that a lot of people are moving into, you may not be happy because as supply goes down while demand is going up, that means prices go up, which means that for you and your family and your loved ones, when they decide to move, they're going to face higher prices. Now, I remember the late 90s and the early 2000s in New York City, and I remember the angst that was present by many native New Yorkers as people from the Midwest and other parts of the country were you know, crowding into certain New York City neighborhoods and gentrifying them. Places like the East Village, Greenpoint, Bushwick, Williamsburg, and more recently, Bed-Stuy, neighborhoods that used to be affordable that were then made less affordable as more and more people moved in. You had native New Yorkers who had lived here their whole lives, whose parents and grandparents had shared that apartment and passed it down to their kids, who were aggravated at the fact that everything was becoming more expensive in their neighborhood as a result of gentrification. And it's very interesting to see that this may be the same trend that occurs over and over again, just in other parts of the country. Now, I can't tell you if it's the people that moved to New York City from the Midwest that are moving back to their home state, or maybe the people who moved here from the Midwest are staying in New York, and it's the native New Yorkers that are tired of what's going on that are moving to Texas and Florida and everywhere else. I can't tell you what it is, but the numbers do make it clear that people are leaving more expensive states for more affordable states. And if that's the case, will you end up with the more affordable states no longer being affordable? Again, we're not talking about occupancy rates going down in New York because that apartment that had five people now has two. It's still occupied. It just means that we now have an extra apartment that may be being occupied in another state. And I think that that may end up causing uh, aggravation, conflict, resentment, 
and people who are native to those particular neighborhoods looking at the people that are coming from other states and going, you're the reason that it's now more expensive. I've seen the conflict that that caused in New York City, and I don't think that that is a good thing, particularly during a time of high inflation and issues in the economy affecting people's ability to work right after we deemed tens of millions of people non-essential and messed up their businesses. I think that that is kind of um, a, a powder keg that is just waiting to explode. I don't think that it is a good thing. But I am interested in your thoughts. I just rented an apartment in a town in New Hampshire that has less than 3,000 people. I've always been curious to move out of New York City, and I wanted to buy a house. Erica suggested, hey, before you move to someplace permanently, what if you just rented an apartment to see if you liked it? You know, just set up a bed, got some pots and pans, and a chair and a desk for your computer so that you could visit, figure out if you like the neighborhood, figure out if you like the surrounding neighborhoods, and then if you find a neighborhood that you actually like, then you buy a house or a condo and move there. So I wound up renting a new apartment. And it was interesting how expensive it was. Again, it would, to be clear, it is cheaper than New York City pricing, but it was very similar to the pricing that you would find for an apartment in Brooklyn 10 years ago, which for a town that had a median income of $24,000, median household income in the low 40,000s, I was quite surprised by the price. You know, again, I'm like, as a New Yorker, it's cheap for me, but I could understand how in a town where your median income is $24,000 for an individual, how an apartment costing even what it would have cost 10 years ago in New York City is kind of nuts. And I do kind of wonder if I drive up there, you know, introduce myself and everything, am I going to be met with a, hey, welcome to our neighborhood? Am I going to be met with one of those weird stares? Like, yo, why are, you, why are you doing this? Why are you making things more expensive for us? Even when it was just my intention to move and become a member of the community. Do you think that this is a good thing? I don't particularly think it's a good thing. And I don't, you know, I'm really bad when it comes to making predictions. I remember in 2007 when the iPhone came out thinking, who's going to want a phone without a keyboard? That's ridiculous. And I mean, obviously, that was one of the stupidest things I've ever said. And probably the second stupidest thing I ever said. I remember in March of 2020, when you were hearing about COVID potentially having a 3% mortality rate and all the people that were going to die. I remember thinking, you know, this is horrible. I don't know if you know people like my dad are going to be able to survive it because he's had seven surgeries. I thought, oh man, this is really bad. You're going to have all these people die. Crap. The one silver lining, and I'm not saying that I'm celebrating it, but the one silver lining is if the population goes down incredibly due to how dangerous this virus is, then maybe at least housing will become a little bit more affordable because you will have less population you know, bidding on the same group of housing. And obviously that is one of the, again, one of the stupidest things that I ever thought, because if you look at a graph of housing from or the housing prices from January 2020 to January of 2022, it's just, yeah, about that. Anyway, let me know what you think here. Do you think that it is a good thing that apartment occupancy is hitting a historic high? I personally don't. I think, again, conflict when prices go up during a time of inflation, this is just I think this is bad all around. And I think that if the housing stock or apartment stock is, of, of new housing, to be clear, not just, you know, people buying old housing and then renting it out to people, if the stock of honest to God new housing does not wind up going up, I think you may see a ratcheting up of resentment and conflict in areas where there are a net gain in people. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. See you all in the next video. Bye now.